Today, I am going to explain a Hindi language biographical sports drama film called Dangal. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. The protagonist of the film is a former Indian wrestler named Mahavir Singh Fogat. Long ago, he left wrestling because of financial difficulties and is currently stuck in a government office job. One afternoon, Mahavir is in the office watching the 1988 Seoul Olympics. The former state-level wrestling champion Harkinder also works alongside him. The two get into a slight argument and challenge each other to a match of Dangal. Being a professional wrestler and double the size of Mahavir, Harkinder is confident. But when the fight starts, Mahavir slams Harkinder to the ground in no time. The results are the same in the following two rounds as well. After the match, Mahavir asks Harkinder to lighten up because he didn't lose to just a normal man, but to a national level wrestling champion. Mahavir quit wrestling years ago, but his dream to win a gold medal for his country hasn't died yet. Hence, he wishes to train his future son from an early age. When he and his wife Daya are expecting a baby, Mahavir frequently stares at the medals and pictures of his achievements on the wall. He dreams that one day, his son's medals will replace his own. But when Daya gives birth to their first child, she turns out to be a girl, Gita. The news is bittersweet for the father, but he still has hope. The villagers give him unwanted advice on how to conceive a son. Some say to try on Sunday mornings, while others advise them to fast on specific days. A year after trying every method, the result is the same, and the couple is blessed with their second daughter, Babita. Declaring that the third time's the charm, Mahavir starts trying for a boy again. However, after they give birth to two more girls, the couple is done having children for a lifetime. Mahavir finally accepts defeat and takes down the pictures from the wall. Years pass and Gita and Babita have turned into teenagers. They are like any other girls in the town, but they are very scared of their strict father. One evening, Mahavir returns home to see his neighbors in front of his house. They complain about Gita and Babita beating up their sons. The two seemingly strong guys have turned blue because of the girls. Instead of asking the daughters what went wrong, Mahavir urges them to show him how they managed to beat the guys. On seeing that the girls are naturally talented in wrestling, he registers that they're just as good as a son. He curses himself for wanting a boy, while his daughters were right in front of him all along. Girls, if your fathers are disappointed that you weren't boys, just kick someone's ass. At night, Mahavir tells Daya that he wants his girls to wrestle. In the conservative society they live in, girls doing anything other than household work is seen as outrageous. Daya is horrified at the idea, scared of facing society's criticism, but Mahavir presses her to let them train for at least a year. If they do not show improvement by then, he promises to let them do whatever they want. The following morning, he wakes Gita and Babita at 5 in the morning. As they cautiously walk outside, they are surprised by their favorite street vendor, who sells their favorite treat, Golgapas. The girls are confused, but they devour the treat to their fullest. When they are done, Mahavir bans them from eating anything oily or spicy from now onwards. They have to follow a strict diet and train every day like a true wrestler. The girls are too intimidated to say no to their father. They run several miles that day and return home with sore muscles. Since their clothes do not allow them to run faster, they are made to wear their cousin Omkar's shorts. Their exposed legs are scandalous for the reserved neighbors. They call Mahavir a psychopath for making his girls act like men, but Mahavir couldn't care less about their comments. On certain days, the girls can hardly stand up straight. Still, Mahavir pushes them to their limits and beyond. After getting them in shape, it is time for him to teach them the basics of wrestling. The head of the local wrestling arena doesn't allow girls to play in his ring, which halts the training for a while. Then, a determined Mahavir makes a ring on his own in the middle of the fields. A few days later, he registers that the girls need to fight with men to become stronger than them. The only guy who is eligible to do so is his nephew Omkar. When he first gets into the ring with them, he defeats them in less than a minute. But over time, failure only helps the girls keep track of how far they have improved. Even though the Fogar family is vegetarian, when Mahavir notices that the girls need more protein, he fights Daya to allow them to eat meat. Mahavir even convinces the butcher to sell them the meat at a lower price. In turn, he promises that the girls will promote his shop when they become famous. Throughout all this, he never asks his daughters what they actually want. Eventually, Gita and Babita get tired of following his orders. They complain that the training is affecting their studies and their hair. According to Mahavir, their studies should be compromised, but something should be done about the hair. 
The sisters are happy that they were able to convince him, but it doesn't last long. It turns out that Mahavir wants to cut their hair short to solve the problem. It is the saddest day for the girls, as they beg him otherwise, but he doesn't listen. People talk about them even more now that they look exactly like guys. Having enough of their father, Gita and Babita skip practice one day to go to a wedding. As they dance at the party, Mahavir crashes it and slaps Omkar for being a bad influence on the girls. Later that day, the sisters, Omkar, and the bride are together in a room. Gita and Babita complain about their father, wishing that they were never born. They are shut down by the 14-year-old bride, who is forcefully being married off by her father. She compares her parents to Gita's and asks them who they like better. In a society where daughters are considered a burden, Mahavir is training them to do something great in their lives, which the bride envies. The comment makes the sisters realize that even though their father is training them ruthlessly, in the end, he is doing it for them. The next day, Mahavir wakes up to see the girls have already started to train. They train the best they can and eventually defeat Omkar. In search of stronger opponents, the father takes them to a local wrestling competition. But since the participants of the competition are only guys, the organizers think it is a sin to let girls fight them. To convince them, Mahavir states that a fight between two genders will surely attract audiences. On the day of the match, a large crowd of people comes to see Gita. She is made to choose an opponent between three boys. When she chooses the strongest one, the crowd gasps, knowing that she will never win. The boy also feels the same, but is proven wrong when Gita slams him to the ground in no time. People start rooting for her by the end of the match and are disappointed when the guy wins. Still, the crowd respects her for putting up a tough competition. Gita is eager for the next match, unable to sleep for two days because she couldn't win the last one. The girls take part in several wrestling matches after that. Gita goes against men who are stronger than her and is able to take everyone down. Their popularity starts increasing and the meat shop uses them as sponsors, as promised. A part of Mahavir's dream comes true when his daughter's medals are displayed on the wall that once used to hold his achievements. When Gita is old enough, she is ready to participate in the national level wrestling competition. Since she had been playing local dangal till now, Mahavir has to train her extra carefully for the nationals. He leaves his office job and starts farming so he can invest more time in her. He also creates a wrestling mat out of sleeping mats to teach her the rules of the sport. After training for months, the day of the sub-junior finals arrives. Since Gita is used to fighting with men double her size, she easily defeats all of her opponents and wins a gold medal. Cut to a few years later, Gita wins the senior national level championship, which is the biggest national level wrestling tournament. This gives her a pass to compete internationally. The people who made fun of Mahavir now praise his long-term thinking. For the international level training, Gita is made to move into a government-run training center in Patiala. Mahavir is worried that a new coach named Pramod won't recognize her strengths and weaknesses. When he tries talking to the coach, Pramod gets angry and asks him to go away. He is an egocentric man who thinks his methods are absolute. His attitude makes Mahavir more worried for his daughter, but he has no choice but to return home. Pramod begins the training by asking the girls to forget all the wrong diet plans and techniques they have learned up until now. Starting the next day, he teaches the girls his self-proclaimed better techniques that completely change Gita's way of approaching a fight. Her biggest strength is her ability to attack, but he asks her to play defensively just because he thinks it is good for her. The new environment causes Gita to divert from wrestling. She starts growing her hair, talking to boys, waking up late, eating anything she wants, and so on. At the same time, Babita also gets old enough for the national level championship. She follows her father's direction and trains hard like Gita used to. One day, Gita returns home with gifts for all of her sisters. The length of her hair and her attitude has changed a lot in just a few months. She subtly disrespects her father, thinking that she is better than him and forgetting everything he has done for her. Later that day, the sisters are training when Gita boasts about the new techniques she is being taught by her new coach. Mahavir challenges her to prove that his old-fashioned technique is wrong. The father and daughter fight against each other in a very hard-to-watch match. Mahavir gives her tough competition, but loses since he is old and weak. The next morning, Gita returns to the city without talking to him. In the following scene, she flies to Sydney for her first world championship. It is the most important match of her life, something she has dreamed of since childhood. However, she does the worst she has ever performed in her career and loses. 
At the same time, Babita wins the national level championship and has to join the training academy after her sister. She goes in with the mindset that she will remember her father's teachings before the coaches. She is also shocked to see that Gita isn't bothered that she lost the last match. She used to lose sleep because of a single defeat, which shows just how much she has changed. A month later, Gita has yet another international match, which she loses for the second time. She gets the same result in the following five matches and doesn't score a single international win. Pramod tells her that she is not made for the international competitions, refusing to admit that his training did her no good. When at her lowest, the only person Gita can think of is her father. She calls him in tears, apologizing for everything. Mahavir cannot help but cry himself. In six months, she is going to take part in the 19th Commonwealth match, where the top players of the world are competing. In order to train her for it, Mahavir decides to come to Patiala. He and Omkar rent two rooms close to the training center. The girls secretly come to them in the morning and train for two hours before their actual training starts. They do good for a few weeks, but Pramod eventually realizes what is going on. The head of the sports board is told about Mahavir's plan. Mahavir saves the girls from being disqualified by promising to leave them alone. Keeping his promise, he helps Gita on the phone by analyzing the recordings of every match she has lost and telling her what she did wrong. Eventually, she wins the trials for the Commonwealth match. Pramod is furious when she gives Mahavir the credit for the win. When the actual championship starts, Gita doesn't do well in the first two rounds of the first match. Pramod asks her to focus on defending, but Mahavir yells at her to attack rather than defend. Using her father's advice, she scores several points and wins the round at six for three. In the semifinals, she fights against the ruthless Nigerian wrestler, Naomi. Like the previous match, Gita thinks of her father's advice and wins several points, but the match ends in a draw. In the additional round, she does the unthinkable by getting free of Naomi's grip and winning the match. This lands her a ticket to the finale. At the after-match press conference, Gita reveals the change in her game is all because of Mahavir. An angered Pramod makes it his mission to get the credit for the final win. The final match is against Angelina, a wrestler who has defeated Gita twice before. Gita is nervous, but Mahavir motivates her, saying that she is not just fighting Angelina, but everyone who thinks women shouldn't be let out of the kitchen. On the day of the finals, everyone excitedly enters the arena. Pramod makes a man take Mahavir to a storeroom and lock him inside. The match begins without his presence, much to Gita's dismay. Gita immediately takes a three-point lead and wins the first round. She does well in the second round as well, but Angelina changes the game with a counterattack. In the last round, the game slips from Gita's hands. She trails by four points with only nine seconds left on the clock. Then, she recalls a special five-pointer technique Mahavir taught her and uses it to win the match in the last second. She finally becomes the victor and the first Indian female wrestler to win gold in an international match. Although it is a huge achievement, her father's absence makes it less special for Gita. When she is awarded, the Indian national anthem plays, which alerts Mahavir. Right then, a janitor opens the door and lets him out. He embraces his daughters in a hug, proud of them for coming so far. The reporters also ignore Pramod entirely and focus on the father and daughters. Then, we see the pictures of real-life Fogat sisters, who are to this date contributing to women's rights and sports in India. Thank you.